presentation. My name is Devin Winton, and I will serve as your Master of Ceremonies. Please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for Ruffles and Flourishes, Presentation of the Colors, the National Anthem sung by Billy Sue Goff, and the Invocation by Chaplain Carlton Birch. Advance the colors. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Would you join me in prayer? God, as tear takers, you have given us the task of stewardship of your wonderful creation. Our nation also has given us the task of stewardship of its resources. As we have worked so hard to ensure these resources are accounted for and used in a wise and responsible manner, we ask that you honor the diligence of these men and women before us. We thank you that their responsible work has enabled and will enable accountability and stewardship to flourish across our organization. 
please help us to consider our own personal responsibility for caring for the people and resources you've placed under our care as well. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Welcome to Lieutenant General Bush, Director, DLA. Mr. Ted Case, Vice Director. Sorry. I'm Simone. ready to get going. <laughs> <laughs> yes, General. And uh, Ms. Simone Reba, Audit Readiness Program Manager. Ms. Pamela Franceschi, Director, D Defense Finance and Accounting Service Columbus, DLA Senior Leaders, and DLA Employees. The Audit Readiness Assertion Celebration is the culmination of a three-year journey preparing DLA's processes, systems, and records for an independent public audit. At this time, I'd like to introduce Lieutenant General Bush. Okay. Well, good morning, folks. So I asked Colonel Ha, how's the crowd look today? He says, pretty good for a Friday. <laughs> this looks great for a Friday. And there could be no better way to end the week than to have a celebration on this milestone for, for audit readiness. So uh, I think this is great. Um, Chaplain Birch, thank you uh, very much for that invocation. Uh, there's probably few endeavors that we'll take on in DLA that uh, require prayer as much as <laughs> audit readiness. Um, but I will tell you, I have it on good authority that uh, the IPA will not accept prayers as evidentiary matter. <laughs> so we have our work cut out for us. To the PLFA leaders that are here today, uh, senior leaders from the staff, uh, Sergeant Major Tobin, uh, the rest of the workforce, uh, some of our distinguished guests, Ms. Franceschi, May, thank you very much for coming back, um, and uh, any other senior leaders that have come back today that, I haven't mi that I've missed, uh, again, thank you very much for being here. Um, I think it's important that we take some time to recognize our accomplishments. We've been doing, uh, since, well, since I've been here for 10 months, We've been uh, working very hard on our audit readiness goals, and uh, I think that uh, it would be easy just to say, okay, well, that's done. Let's move on to the next thing and just keep, keep working. But I think it's important that we take time to uh, recognize the accomplishments. So, Simone, thank you very much for your leadership on this, and thanks for pulling us all together to do this on a Friday when this probably represents 99% of the people that are working in the building today. <laughs> so, um, you know, the challenge that, uh, that we faced uh, uh, on this, on this um, um, to, to get to where we're at was pretty tough, but in typical DLA fashion that we were able to, uh, we were able to meet the, uh, uh, to achieve the task. When I came to this job 10 months ago, I met with all the senior executives, and I remember my meeting with Simone. And, um, and she said to me that nobody swarms on a problem like DLA. And I said, okay. And I remembered that she said that for, for, for these 10 months. And I would have to say that this is a perfect example of what she had in mind. I mean, it was a big challenge. Everybody got organized. And I'll tell you, wherever I go in the Defense Logistics Agency, I see evidence of audit readiness at work um, in, uh, across, the, across the agency. So just from a, a historical perspective on where we've come from, because it's been so long that we've been working on this, the NDAA back in 2009 said that we needed to have our financial statements audit ready uh, by uh, fiscal year 17. And, and four years ago, uh, Secretary Panetta directed the department to, uh, to accelerate uh, our, 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 our processes. Now, my predecessor, uh, Admiral Harnacek, um, uh, challenged DLA to achieve audit readiness a couple years early uh, to move it from September 17 to September of 15. And it was one of his major uh, leadership accomplishments from his time as, as, the, uh, as the director. So when I came on board, I said I had just come from Air Force Material Command, which also has a very significant audit readiness challenge. And I said, what did Admiral Harnacek do? Um, he knew he wasn't going to be here at that point. Um, and I thought, OK, I won't say anything, but I'm just going to wait for the train wreck. And the train wreck never came. Uh, I mean, we've had challenges. We still have some corrective action plans out there, but there, have been no, there was no train wreck. The problem was swarmed. We have done, you have done exceptionally well. Ted, of, uh, Mr. Case, of course, uh, 
uh, was the one that put the muscle behind Admiral Harnacek's guidance. Uh, so the hammer issued a memo back in uh, uh, June of 2012, and he said 100% uh, uh, commitment and focus, and, uh, and he made it really clear that this wasn't a headquarters, uh, headquarters problem, that this was a DLA-wide problem. And, um, and like Simone and, and many of the rest of you, is confident that everyone can do it. And so as I've walked in here, the things that I thought I knew when I was at Air Force Material Command, I really got to know when I was here. Things that are part of my, um, a part of my um, um, uh, vocabulary now, uh, balance sheet, statement of budgetary resources, uh, statement of net cost, statement of changes in net position. People that have known me for 30 years would be surprised to hear those words coming <laughs> off my mouth. And so uh, it was with great pleasure back on the 30th of September that I signed the agency's um, audit readiness assertion letter and was able to, uh, to send that forward. And we're ready for the audit by the independent public accountant. We're looking forward to it. Uh, I think all of us are because we would, you know, you don't, when you prepare for the final exam, you want to make sure you get to take it and take it in a timely fashion. And hopefully that process won't draw, draw out too long. I would like to make a co couple of comments and uh, uh, predictably draw this back to our strategic plan and the, and the uh, goals that we've set there. Um, there's a number of things in our strategic plan that are at work in, the, in our audit readiness preparation. Um, one of those, of course, would be innovation. Um, everything that, you know, you don't get all the people and resources you need to undertake a big project like this. And, and it was certainly the case with audit readiness. And it required innovation, it required compromise, it, it required uh, some, some hard work to get to where we're at right now. The other one uh, element of our strategic plan that I think is at play here is accountability. Uh, we are a large enterprise in the Department of Defense. Uh, Forty billion dollars a year is certainly so enough money to get you in trouble in Washington, D.C. And, uh, and we have to be accountable to the American public for every, every one of those dollars. And audit readiness uh, helps put us in a place where we can more fully explain to them, uh, to the American public, what we're doing with all of those dollars. So um, I think that we've established a great uh, foundation for the future. The, um, uh, we have a lot to do. We're taking a final exam, but this is the final exam you get at the end of your first semester of your freshman year. You still have a sophomore year, a junior year, and a senior year. We have a long ways to go. We have to move into sustainment. One of the, one of the goals that we've, um, that we've highlighted in, the, um, in our strategic planning. Uh, a lot to do, but it's very important that we were able to take some time today to recognize where we've come in this event. So, Simone, thank you again uh, for your leadership and for the leadership of all the st senior staff and the workforce that have pulled this off. Thank you very much. Lieutenant General Bush will be joined by Mr. Case and Ms. Reba center stage to begin the recognition portion of the celebration. At this time, we will recognize the business cycle teams, field command teams, program management enterprise, and DFAS teams for their contributions to the audit readiness effort. They will receive a diamond lapel pin and a DLA commendation or appreciation certificate that reads, as a member of the Defense Logistics Agency audit readiness team, your efforts and significant contributions helped DLA assert to audit readiness by 2015, two years ahead of the DOD 2017 congressional mandate. Audit readiness team members analyzed business processes, developed correction, corrective action plans, and executed the plans to drive solutions to DLA's complex business processes. Your efforts prove that DLA is committed to financial stewardship, better accountability as a federal agency, and improved processes to enhance warfighter support. Your distinct accomplishments reflect great credit upon yourself, the audit readiness team, DLA, and the Department of Defense. The recipients, will you please stand as your name is called and come on stage, and we will also recognize the deputy commander or enterprise business cycle owner. From aviation, Ms. Patsy Dockery, Ms. Casey Easter Matthews, General Allen Day, and Mr. Tony Paleo.
from DLA Energy, Mr. Jim Manziera. <laughs> Mr. Jim Manziera, Ms. Jean Blackburn, and Mr. George Atwood. Disposition Services, Mr. Mark Eicher, Ms. Kathy Morgan, and Mr. Michael Cannon. From distribution, Ms. Denise Parker, Mr. Dave Carpenter, and Ms. Twyla Gonzalez. From troop support, Ms. Jerry Cromley, Mr. Joe McGarvey, and Mr. Richard Ellis. From Land and Maritime, Mr. Michael Jones, Mr. Justin Sponseller, and Mr. Jim McClarty. Accounting Officer, Ms. Karen Obi Toller. Program Management Office, Ms. Bridget Collins. At response and sustainment, Ms. Monica Harrigan. Statement of Budgetary Activity, Ms. Joy Stith.
Financial Reconciliation and Reporting, Mr. Delvon Darden. Budget to execute, Ms. Marcia High. Marcia High, pardon me. Corrective Action Plans, Mr. Paul Woodleaf. Human Performance, Ms. Tanya Lee, and accepting on her behalf, Ms. Carrie Glass. Enterprise data, Mr. John Maley. And not here, okay. Moving on, work plan management, Mr. Joe Ryder. Service Provider, Mr. Eric Engelbrechtston. Thank you, Mr. Paleo. Now for strategic materials, Mr. Gary Porter, Mr. Eric Mata, and Mr. Matt Beebe. Procure to pay, Mr. Mickey Zayas. Thank you, Mr. Beebe. Plan to stock, order to cash, Ms. Lisa Yeagle and Mr. Michael Scott.
Thank you, Mr. Scott. Environmental liabilities, Mr. Bill Carnegie and Dr. Renee Roman. Acquire to retire, Mr. Paul Whitfield. And although not here, Office of the Inspector General, Mr. Steve Piggott is not here. But, uh, thank you, Dr. Roman. Uh, hire to retire, Dr. Bernadette Whitehead and Mr. Brad Bunn. Human Performance Advisor and Training, Ms. Cheryl Steptoe-Simon. Thank you, Mr. Bunn. Internal use software, Ms. Andrea Newsom and Ms. Kathy Cutler. And from J5, Ms. Millie Sugoff and Ms. Felissa Goldenberg. Thank you, Ms. Goldenberg. From DFAS, Mr. Jeff Grossclose and Ms. Pamela Franceschi. And while we have Ms. Franceschi on stage, we would like also to recognize DFAS for their exceptional partnership with DLA. Ms. Pamela Franceschi will accept a Keystone Award plaque on behalf of DFAS that reads, Thank you for your partnership and leadership in ensuring DLA was audit ready by 2015, two years ahead of the DOD 2017 Congressional Mandate. At this time, we will also like to recognize Vice Admiral Retired Mark Harnacek with the DLA Assertion Founders Award. Unfortunately, Vice Admiral Retired Harnacek could not be with us today, and Mr. Case will accept the award on his behalf. The plaque reads, thank you for your vision and leadership <laughs> in ensuring DLA was audit ready by 2015, two years ahead of the DOD 2017 Congressional Mandate. Thank you. 
Thank you, General Bush and Mr. Case. At this time, Ms. Reba has some remarks. Okay. okay, well, nothing significant was ever accomplished without uh, the right tone at the top. So, General Bush, I just wanted to take a moment on behalf of the audit readiness team to thank you for keeping the momentum going, for taking a stand when you needed to, and for seeing us through to the finish line. Thank you very much, sir. Um, from A.D. Vincentis, who came back to visit us today, um, she had an unusual timing of retiring right when this thing got started. Um, but before she did, she put the wheels in motion to make sure that we got this going in the right direction. So thank you, May, for coming today and, and for your help. Uh, I'd like to thank my um, boss, Mr. Paleo, um, for working really hard to make sure that everyone in the agency, especially his colleagues, understood that audit readiness was not just about finance. Um, and believe me, that was you know, quite an interesting challenge. And um, so thank you, Tony, for helping us, you know, all understand that it takes the end-to-end -end process to make this thing happen. And also to put um, the uh, um, appropriate structure in place so we could continue to make things happen. Um, and last but not least, I'd like to thank my comrades in arms, uh, the enterprise business cycle owners, the um, P uh, PLFA deputy commanders and, and Mr. Cannon, and our A123 lead, Felissa Goldenberg, um, for all their support. Um, this has been really hard for all of us, and without, the, again, the correct tone at the top, we wouldn't have gotten here. Um, and these guys, in addition to executing Admiral Harnacek's four other big ideas, had to make time for this. They gave me the best team in the world um, in order to make it successful. And um, sat through a series of stewardship committee meetings and IPRs and everything you want to, you know, think under the sun to make sure that this happened. So the biggest thing they had to do, though, was learn a brand new language, which was accounting. So in honor of their newfound accounting competencies, I would like to ask the enterprise business cycle owners, the stewardship, um, field stewardship folks, and, and Felissa to come join me on stage to receive an honorary accountant award. <laughs> And it actually has a working calculator so that they can continue to fine tune their accounting skills. And in case we didn't tell you, you're signed up for FM certification classes next week. So. For the group photo, we're recognizing Dr. Renee Roman, EBCO for Environmental Liabilities and Acquired to Retire. Mr. Tony Paleo, EBCO for Financial Reconciliation and Reporting and Budget to Execute. Mr. Michael Scott, EBCO for Plan to Stock in Order to Cash. Mr. Brad Bunn, EBCO for Hire to Retire. Mr. Matt Beebe, EBCO for Procure to Pay. Ms. Kathy Cutler, EBCO for J6. Mr. Jim McClarty, Field Stewardship Champion, Land and Maritime. Mr. Richard Ellis, Field Stewardship Champion, Troop Support. General Alan Day, on behalf of Charles Lilly, Field Stewardship Champion, Aviation. Mr. George Atwood, Field Stewardship Champion, Energy. Mr. Michael Cannon, Field Stewardship Champion, Disposition Services. Ms. Twyla Gonzalez, Field Stewardship Champion, Distribution and Ms. Felissa Goldenberg, Enterprise A123 lead. Let's give them a round of applause. Would uh, General Bush and Mr. Case please join the group for the photo. Thank you, General Bush and Ed Coase. Mr. Case, please remain on stage. Uh, you're not done yet. Okay, so we wanted to take a moment again on behalf of the audit readiness team to just uh, do a little special shout out for Mr. Case. Um, I'll tell you personally, um, when I first was appointed as the audit readiness program manager, Mr. Case came to see me and said, 
guess what? We're accelerating this thing by two years. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's really funny. <laughs> he didn't laugh. <laughs> so um, he sort of uh, dug in and went along with us the whole time, uh, reading, what, probably 10,000 pages of audit readiness assertion memo documentation, plus chairing the stewardship committee and put, uh, you know, making sure that we had the right resources, and most importantly, deconflicting us when we happen to have disagreements, which hardly ever happened. <laughs> so having said that, um, and for those of you that have known Ted for a really long time, um, know that his real love is finance. It really is. <laughs> so, so Mr. Case, in addition to being recognized as an honorary accountant, we also would like to recognize you as a co-founder of the Audit Net Readiness Program. Um, and his plaque, just like um, the other uh, honorary accountants in the audience, includes a calculator, but he also has a, a pair of risky business sunglasses for Ted, the enforcer, case. Thank you, Mr. Case and Ms. Reba. <laughs> Audit readiness was truly a global effort impacting all DLA employees. As such, every employee in the enterprise will receive a letter of recognition and lapel pin for your efforts. These awards will arrive shortly if they have not already been delivered. Today's ceremony has been another opportunity to celebrate the great accomplishments of our DLA partners, customers, and employees. At this time, I would like to invite DLA Vice Director, Mr. Ted Case, to deliver his closing remarks. So I'd like to thank you all for joining us in this recognition ceremony. Uh, when we did the pre-brief for the, the general on this, um, he asked Simone, well, what's Ted going to do in this? And I said, nothing. <laughs> It's what I always do, nothing. <laughs> and he said, no, no, you got to do the closing remarks. And Simone's eyes went out to the size of 50 cent pieces at that point because she was afraid I was going to say, what are you guys all doing here? Get to work. I got to get this thing done. And I said, I'd never do that. I would never do that. So she wrote me a bunch of remarks. I'm going to use some of them. Um, <laughs> I've been on this latest journey with you from the beginning. Uh, in fact, I've been on this journey longer than most of you. Um, before our current success effort, under the guidance of Ms. Reba, Mr. Paleo held the torch of audit readiness for many years by himself, kind of like John the Baptist wandering around in the desert. <laughs> he didn't get too far then, and so May decided that I should help him. And so then we both spent many years wandering around <laughs> in the desert. So what changed? We started treating audit readiness as a program. We put a PM who was competent to do the job, and we got to the real issues. Forget about the $2 billion we spent on EBS. We never intended to make this audit ready, and now we had to redo many of the things to make it audit ready. It's the hard work that people did to make the systems, processes, and procedures that would get us to a point where we would be audit ready, and ready for an assertion in FY17. Not to be outdone by any of the departments, by Samuel Harnicek was sure we were already audit ready. And so he told us, accelerate this for two years. And the story that Simone told you is actually true. I did tell her, and I wasn't laughing at the time because I didn't know how we were going to do this. We understood that finishing the task in the original timeline was going to be very daunting, but this acceleration was just too much. So we stretched a lot. And as expected, you, DLA, pulled through with the resources, we developed a faster plan, and we executed that plan. After chairing countless hours of stewardship committee meetings, which I'm really someday going to miss, <laughs> and reading the 10,000 pages of the, the last assertion package, the previous one was only 8,000 pages, and I'll, <clears throat> I'll divert a little bit to tell you why I read those. When I was a young lieutenant, I was working in a central design activity, and I was in the operating system branch, and so all of the code that came to me was in machine language. And there were little comments on the side, and 
uh, one Friday afternoon, about 1700, they brought me the next release. And I got about halfway through it, and they said, it's got to go out. I said, all right, fine, I'll sign the darn thing, and I signed it. It went out Monday morning. I'm standing in front of the admiral, and he said, did you read this whole package? And I said, no, sir, I only read half of it. Well, would you go to page 462, and in there is a little notation that says, if you get this message on your console, you are really in deep trouble. <laughs> At that point, I was not going to let the boss sign this until I read the entire package, just to make sure there were no satanic verses or anything. <laughs> so I've witnessed firsthand the changes that, and how many changes we've had to make to get to be audit ready. This is perhaps our biggest and most successful effort in this decade. Uh, only BSM was larger, but there were many, many more of us working on it than, than there was on this. So we signed out our assertion on 30 September. We still have some stuff to clean up. I mean, when you go through and you look at all the caps that, that were still to be written or about to be written, we've still got to do all those. And we've got a little bit of time until the IPA comes on board, um, early in calendar year 16. And I've been told that the first year audits are always tough. Um, so I just ask you to please do your best to comply with the auditor requests in a timely manner. If you can't get something done, tell us quickly so that we can try to intervene. Ultimately, we can't control whether we'll get a pass or a fail. That'll be up to the auditors to decide. But by following what we've done, the standards, the operating procedures, the caps that are, that are about to go in, and just good compliance and oversight, we'll have a better chance. So regardless of the ultimate audit opinion, no one can diminish the significant amount of effort that you contributed to get this audit ready. So on behalf of the senior leadership in DLA, we thank you for all your hard efforts. Now I'd like at this point to have all of you join us for some cake and some punch, and then get back to work. I need this done. <laughs> On behalf of Lieutenant General Bush, Mr. Ted Case, and Ms. Simone Reba, thank you for your participation in our assertion celebration. As the official ceremony comes to an end, please rise for the departure of the official party, and as Ted said, you are invited to join the official party for a reception in the rotunda immediately following. Thank you once again.